copy of the pump station close for the month of January is also included in the packet. There are no uh, concerns were noted. Uh, the generator um, at the treatment plant, which uh, at the last trustees meeting had a, as you know, had a catastrophic failure and we evaluated um, uh, repair, replace uh, options at that time. Um, and we had determined to uh, replace the generator that actually has been, uh, the generator end has been removed. Uh, it got shipped out, rebuilt, and it is back and reinstalled already. So um, we have the, uh, the plant generator back online and I'll, I'll get a total accounting of the repairs. I did reach out to our insurance uh, agent and this will be a claim, a covered claim. Uh, so we will have a $5,000 deductible on this claim. I, I, my estimate is the overall with the rental is going to be about fifty thousand wow. um, dollars. We are currently uh, reviewing the shop drawing for the uh, building odor control system, which we'll uh, be installing this spring. Uh, on Old Town and Partridge Lane, the gravity sewer slip lining project has has been completed. The Orchard Street Siphon Manhole was replaced. Uh, this is the terminus manhole for the Church Street Siphon, had to, and it had deteriorated and required replacement. This work was completed by Risbera Villas on February 7th. The project went very smoothly. Uh, repair prepped the site the day before the work, and the district had four septage trucks staged to haul sewage around the work zone. Typically, the excava uh, tragically, the excavator operated uh, Jake Held. Kaplan um, died the following Friday while, while snowmobiling. Our heartfelt condolences go out to him and his family. <coughs> Willette and Associates have begun working on the annual audit. Uh, they were on site uh, with Wendy and Serena on Monday, February 20th, uh, going, and going through the files, and at which uh, uh, at which time they completed all their off-site work, um, on-site work. Uh, they will complete the audit, the audit shortly and um, make a presentation to the board once it's complete. I'll, I'll forward you copies of the final audit once that's complete. And that will also include our, um, our uh, annual report. Uh, pump station number 27 is the new pump station that's currently being constructed down at the town. So the building has been complete, completed and they are currently working on the plumbing and electrical and, and insulation. It is anticipated that uh, it, it will be operational sometime in March. Um, so I gave you a picture of it. It's a nice looking building. They've done, they've done a really nice job on the project. Uh, we have re received our fifth effluent PFAS results as conducted by the state. The total PFAS measured was 57 nanograms per liter or parts per trillion. Uh, last month I reported that a general result for zero. Unfortunately, I misread the report. The actual number report result was 72.1. And uh, below I gave a summary. So the, the numbers have varied from a low of 57 to a high of 87. Those five numbers. And that's what I have for uh, the superintendent's report. Any questions for the superintendent? I have, I have one. I have one. Just uh, with regards to the PFAS limits, what so for the viewing public eventually as to what normal limits would, would be or are acceptable limits? We don't have any right at this point. You there, don't? Okay. Yeah, there's, none has been set nor has been established. <clears throat> Um, a nanogram per liter is a, a very small quantity. Um, I forget the acronym, but I had reported it once at one of our meetings. And I'll bring it back. Parts per trillion. Parts per trillion, but it's like one drop in three Olympic size pools or something along that line is the equivalent. But I, I'll, I'll bring that analogy back and, and provide it at the next meeting. Thank you. I believe they just started to establish those limits. They've been working on it for quite a long while. It, it's and it's a, become a very political issue. So it's it. I don't. Nothing's going to happen fast on that. Are we seeing any statistics from other other plants reporting? Um, I haven't seen any other results um, at all. I don't know what your plant is running at. 
Less than 15. Less than 15? Uh, less than 50. <coughs> less 50, than 50. Yeah, five zero. So, I can't remember. I don't pay attention. DEP has asked the waste treatment plants on the state to do this every month. Mm -hmm. And they're paying for all the analysis and they're crunching the numbers to try to figure out, okay, let's decide what the baseline is. And more than likely, will the test will continue? The DEP will require continued testing once a month? I've heard um, on average those that collect septage have higher results than those that don't. Um, Just a small sample size from the, yeah. my perspective. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> Any other questions, comments? Okie dokie. Correspondence. Will that and associates, did we already talk about that? Uh, yeah, just briefly. As part of the <coughs> annual audit, uh, uh, Will and associates uh, sent the, the risk of fraud letter to Mr. Rico, and I attached a copy of his uh, of the executed letter, which uh, Mr. <coughs> Rico answered that he has no concerns about any risk or fraud. Nope. The other item uh, on the agenda, this this is actually added since the original agenda for last week. Uh, and it's Casella's notice of rate <coughs> adjustment. On February 24th, we received a sludge disposal rate adjustment letter for an additional $62 to $74 per ton increase in our sludge disposal costs. This is to cover additional costs accrued due to the fact that they are now hauling sludge up to New Brunswick. Uh, the reason uh, is due to instability issues in the Juniper Ridge and landfill caused by an increased sludge and decrease in the quantity of bulky waste, uh, both directly the result of legislation passed last session, LD 1911 and LD 1639. I estimate the impact of the overall cost of the sludge disposal to be an additional 200000 annually. I immediately executed the agreement to secure a truck to haul our sludge. Um, I needed a truck out last Friday, and it did not actually leave until Wednesday of this week. So that's it for correspondence. Questions? I have one with regarding the issues with trucking. What what were the reasons for the delay? Uh, they didn't have. Uh, they couldn't bring it to Juniper Ridge, which is where it's going, because of the uh, the cells in the landfill have become unstable due to the extra uh, wet material of the the sludge that is now being disposed of the landfill as a result of it 1911, and they don't have the bulk of material <coughs> to bulk it up to stabilize the cells, and so they they actually shut down. And across the state, this is a statewide issue. This is not a Scarborough issue. Yep. This is a statewide issue, and it's um, consequently they're they're starting to look at bringing sludge up to New Brunswick. And DEP is looking at other sites. Uh, they did allow Casella to utilize their Hawkridge facility as a staging area to transfer sludge um, or. St from one truck to another to allow them to drive it up to New Brunswick because there's a uh, problem associated with that because the trucks that are hauling the sludge right now are licensed for interstate not and the interstate. truck drivers do not have the CDLs and the med medical forms for the in interstate. In interstate and uh, so they got to change trucks, they got to change drivers, it's becoming a very difficult Understood. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was clear that that the resultant delay wasn't because we hadn't signed any agreement. No, the delay was not because we hadn't signed any agreement. It's because they, matter, uh, matter of fact, the day that I got the agreement, I immediately executed and sent it back. Uh, I believe you got the same agreement. Uh, I did. DEP, and I had this further on down. They've been providing us other locations, other sites to dispose of sludge, out, and they're all out, out of state. They don't have an in-state solution right now. Um, I mentioned later in my notes uh, a New Jersey site that it, what they initially, the commissioner actually thought it was an, uh, an incinerator. It is not. It was another a very large treatment plant. Um, that site only uh, will take liquid sludge. And so I did a big, uh, quick calculation in order to get transfer our sludge down there. 
Uh, we would need four tanker trucks a day, seven days a week, and it would result in a uh, $6 million hauling, annual hauling cost, never mind the sludge disposal cost. So that option obviously is off the table. That's larger than our current budget. So, this Grambling. And just for record, uh, based on the LDs of the PFAS, obviously going back to composting is not an option. L going back to composting is not an option. LD 1911 mandated that all, us, all municipal sludges go into landfills. Um, I did ask the commissioner, and I did actually invite the commissioner here tonight, um, uh, DEP commissioner, and she could not make it. I also invited Aaron Carney and um, Stacy Brennan, who also, well, obviously, they're not here. Um, and, um, and yeah, 1911 mandates that all municipal sludges go into the landfill. So that's our only option for that. And 1639 dictates the the uh, makeup of the, it limits the, the construction debris that can be put into the landfill to in-state construction debris only, no out-of-state construction debris. Uh, so the increase of what the wet sludge and a decrease of the bulking material is the, the cause of, of this situation we have. And the legislation doesn't allow DEP to um, change it, I guess. Did, they, it's, it, did I read somewhere that you were looking into uh, uh, oh, sure. the sludge by it? Uh, Putting some heat on it to hmm? dewater it further. You were looking into uh, um, some heat unit to do, to dewater the sludge further. We had in the past we, when we did our initial dewatering study to pick technologies. We did look at uh, at that time. We did look at um, a dryer, you know, a couple of different dryer options to increase the uh, solids content and, and decrease uh, the moisture content. Um, at the time, we were paying $135 a ton, I believe, for disposal, and a dryer is very expensive to operate. It wasn't cost effective. Um, at this new rate, with the, you know, going up to $200 a ton, round numbers, uh, it may be cost effective. We're going to take another look at that and see if that's, it's now again cost effective, because there, there is a breaking point in order to change. Okay, so we'll just we'll continue the discussion on the new business, but we would like to handle our <coughs> members of the public that are here to present some petitions to the district. So we have no old business left. Let's start off with Evergreen Credit Union. Yes, yeah, so um, do we need to make a we request to need. modify the agenda? I'm not going to do it. Just let's move with it. We've already modified the agenda just to change the date. So okay, um, we'll, we're uh, we're shifting the agenda a little bit, moving uh, Evergreen Credit Union up front, followed by the uh, Morrison Development Center, and then we will address the uh, sewer moratorium. Uh, so, on behalf of the Evergreen Credit Union, Sebago Technics requested district approval for a 3,128 square foot commercial building to be used as a credit union. Um, and presented um, as presented in their submittal documents. This lot is currently sewered. Uh, the residential home on the lot was connected in 1984. This home will be demolished <coughs> to facilitate the building of a new credit union. The previous approved flow for the lot was 320 gallons per day. The requested flow for the credit union is the same, 320 gallons per day. Uh, I recommend approval for, uh, with the following conditions. The wastewater flow allocation is limited to 320 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows more than the allotment or characteristic are subject to additional approvals. And um, no capacity reserve fees are due. And finally, a TV inspection of the existing sewer service must be, in, uh, must be conducted via CCTV, and any deficiencies must be corrected prior to um, final approval. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Baron. Thank you, Jason. All right. Do we have someone representing the project who can like explain it? Um, <coughs> no. 
Okay, Excuse any me. questions about the project? Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. I yes, do, go ahead, Mike. I do have one question. Remind me again why uh, capacity reserve fees aren't required here. It's an existing, uh, they're already connected. Um, and they're on sewer. You only pay capacity reserve fee for new services. Or increased. Or increase, increase capacity. in capacity. Yeah. Yep. They okay. maintain the existing capacity okay. of the, the current lot. Okay. Any other questions? Barring none. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you, sir. Um, the next is the Morrison Development Center, in which we do have representatives here. On behalf of Morrison Development Center, uh, Mitchell and Associates have requested district approval for the proposed dormitory, including a commercial kitchen, as presented in their submittal documents. This lot is currently sewered and is approved for 1,485 gallons per day. The requested flow for the dormitory is 1,924 gallons per day. I recommend approval of the following conditions. The wastewater flow allocation is limited to the 1,924 gallons a day, typical sanitary waste for the proposed dormitory. The existing building will retain the already approved 1,485 gallons per day. Any flows uh, more than the allotment or characteristic are characteristic subject to additional approvals and fees. This project is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. Any additional flow in excess of this are subject to additional approvals. The current capacity reserve fee is $19.15 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR index. Based on the current fee and flow, the total capacity reserve fee due would be $36,844.60. Recommend approval with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Thank you, Harold. Okay. We have someone here now that can put it up. We do. I have, I have a question first, if you don't sure. mind. Sure. Uh, with regards to the commercial kitchen, is there already a grease interceptor? There will be a grease, site, or is there grease, be? grease trap in, as part of the project, and it is depicted in the final plans. Perfect. Good question. All right. You're up. Oh, okay. I don't like the hand that they did that. <laughs> uh, you know, good point. <laughs> he does a great job presenting. He did a tremendous job. I was ready to do the dog and show, and he was pretty much in. You know what I mean? We were trying to respond to it. We know you had some last minute questions regarding the, uh, the functioning of the dormitory and things, the number of people there. Yep. So set that information up. Yep, I'm all set with that. All set with yep, that. all the background information. I like to get everything lined up perfectly before I bring it to boot. Right. So. Any more along with these from them, and it's the same thing that more from the Morrison Center, just in case there are any specific questions to the Morrison Center's operation or based on the design work that they have any questions. I'm sure. happy to answer them. It's straightforward. The two story building uh, uh, for dormitories and ten capacity residents, and then there will be the kitchen that will provide meals. Uh, the one level part of the uh, dining hall, or the dining hall, and it will serve the residents there as well as student bodies and senior facilities. I have a question. Yeah. So, is that lot built out now? Is it totally built out, or just capacity is built further? Uh, there's still a little wiggle room on there, but okay. not an awful lot at this point. So, just curious. Ben, oh, you had a question. Yeah, uh, just to be clear, this is an additional additional flow of 1924 in addition to the 1485. Correct. Okay. Any more questions? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, you can stay and watch the <coughs> fireworks if you want. <laughs> Two miles away, take no worries. Three year old, three year old. Three year old wasn't happy when I wanted to do it. It's very good to see It's you like here. a good reason to stay. <laughs> well, it's a yes and a no. Thank you all. I don't think you'd like to do that. Yeah. Okay.
Did I do the math? Okay. What, what was that number? Shall we move on? Oh, okay. When they're done with their math. Oh, okay. It's put down. Okay. So it's 20 times. the lesson. 19. So 19. So 20 times 2 is 40. That's right. So 33. All right. Let's move on then. Thank you. Uh, sewer moratorium. All right. Alternate sludge disposal sites have become unreliable uh, in the state of Maine making it very difficult to obtain trucks to, con um, to convey our sludge to a disposal site. As previously mentioned, Juniper Ridge site has become unstable and there are only accepted limited quantities of sludge. Our last truckload left um, this past Wednesday, five days late, was headed and was headed to New Brunswick. Uh, I would not be surprised to see if the New Brunswick puts a stay on this disposal option uh, in, in not too long of uh, a term, um, one of the other providence is already uh, limited, uh, have, has put a stay on um, main sludges being disposed of and uh, being, being spread. Being in, spread in, in Quebec. In Quebec. Uh, DB did provide me, as I mentioned, with a, section, not a second option in, in the incinerator in New Jersey. And, and, as I mentioned, this is actually ends up being a, a $6 million hauling cost annually. So this really is out. They have also provided, just today, has, has given us some other incinerator locations at, um, I know Ohio, Ohio one was, was one. Cleveland, the other one was? Cleveland, oh. Arkansas, Alabama. Arkansas, and then Alabama. So three out of state, three more out of state options. Um, these, you know, um, as you know, yeah, these are out of state op uh, disposal options, and they're not going to be a, a, a they're, they can't be long term solutions for everybody. They, the, the state needs to work on a in state solution, and they need to be doing it relatively quickly. Um, so, until we have a reliable sludge disposal solution, I recommend a sewer moratorium, including sewer permits, sewer extension permits, ability to serve letters and septage. Um, all, products, uh, all projects already approved would be exempt from this moratorium, uh, including the two that uh, we had tonight. Um, with that, I open it up for discussion. What do we know that uh, the planning board has in the pipeline right now that we haven't seen? Do we know what that looks like? I do not have that information. Um, do you know of anything coming before you that hasn't come before you yet? There, there certainly is a um, an apartment building in, in the eight corners area. Is that coming? I think that's it's already been, that, that, been approved. That's been approved yeah. by us already. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know of anything you might know. Do I can put you on the spot? Um, no, I, I you know there are. Um, can you identify? Oh, yourself? I'm sorry, Karen Martin. I'm with the Discovery Permit Development District, and it's between Tom and I, we're here, just trying to understand what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, there are certainly several projects in the works. I don't know how many um, dams, pro dams units have been approved in the, in the pipeline. Um, but in terms of uh, those that are coming up for building permits, uh, I think that's where the crunch is. Tom, wouldn't you say? Like mm. getting, it's very difficult for us if you're going to put a moratorium on it. Where if, if somebody's at the stage of, I've already been through site plan, I'm mm -hmm. ready to pull my building permits. Um, so I guess I would say we should really understand what that number is. And um, a lot of those that have been through site plan have also been through our approval process. Right. Anyway, so. If I could, I, it, what I heard the superintendent recommend is, is projects already approved. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Correct. And by that you mean approved by this body? By this body. 
Yeah. Uh, not unlike what you did just the two just now. Yeah. yeah. So that would be the that would be the uh, indicator if a project has received that level of approval through the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees. It's green lighted to go forward. Do you know how many projects that that are out there that we've approved that have not been permitted yet? Um, there's been there's a fair number. Uh, there's the apartment, the eight corners apartment project. Um, we just did, was it next gen at the, must have been next gen at the downs. That was approved, correct? I don't we? remember that one. I don't remember that one either. I don't remember oh, next gen at the downs. But that's okay, I don't remember one. There's, the, there are the apartment so buildings at the downs that are approved and there is the, um, uh, I can't come up with the right name, but the nursing home is that lot 42 uh, that's been approved um, the what's that the America's house right there the America's house that's the front house. no that's the small one yeah. but there's the large one that's not constructed yet I think that's right that's, that's is that America's house but that's uh, I don't think they're even close to fully building permits at this point so uh, yeah I mean you know but they're they've gone through the process and they're approved and Costco's approved um, Actually, that one, I think uh, the America's House, I think, needs to come back and refresh their local approval. Uh, they waited too long. But I don't know if we have a. Uh, I don't think ours still. is sunsetted. Yeah, ours is still. Yeah. Yep. So that, that would be the. Any approved projects would, would move forward. I think perhaps the big question is what do you anticipate is that length of time that a moratorium would be in place? Um, I, <laughs> that's, a that's the question of the night. Yeah, that's, a good that's a good question. I would hope that DEP gets beyond these driving to New Jersey, Ohio, and Arkansas solutions and actually uh, make some legislative changes that will allow um, the use of additional bulky waste to, to maintain Juniper Ridge in a, in a safe and operational fashion. That would be a very quick thing that could be done. And, you know, you know, if they did that Friday, we could get rid of this day at the next meeting or the, the moratorium at the next meeting. Um, I know DEP is, is working hard on it at any level. So I'd be surprised if it, it we'd have to maintain this at all for a long period of time. Because it's, it is just not us, it is the entire state. But as I understand it, it has to be a legislative change, correct? To allow outside bulky waste into Juniper Ridge, yes. And, but there's nothing before them right now on the calendar. What's that? There's nothing before them on the calendar. No, but they were, they were inundated with lobbyists today, and there should be something on the calendar. I, would, I think there's going to be uh, there's got to be some emergency legislation passed is what's going to have to happen. Go ahead, Tom. Jeremy, uh, just for the record, Tom Hall, town manager, Scarborough town manager. Uh, I'm not an attorney. Uh, I'm not conversant in the laws that govern uh, authorities in the state of Maine, but I'm quite familiar with certain municipal um, regulations, and I surmise, and I'll say, uh, underscore that uh, that that there's uh, a relationship that's not directly. Applicability. Um, the town has just gone through imposing moratorium, so as a function of that, I'm somewhat familiar just uh, going through it just in the last month or so. So I, I have a number of procedural questions just so I can understand and perhaps others can appreciate some of the uh, particulars here. Um, I, I presume that this is pursuant to Title 38, the process uh, provided for in the state law. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Um, with respect to that, I believe. Uh, uh, well, there's a number of questions I have, but I believe I'm certain that there you cannot impose a moratorium longer than 180 days. It can't be open-ended. Um, if you wish, you can extend that for one additional time up to another 180 days. Um, so I, I think it's important that you, I, I think it's required as part of this process that you determine the duration of the moratorium. Okay. Uh, just to be compliant with state law. Um, I guess beyond that, um, you know, 
May law does provide for the ability for these the moratoriums to be retroactive, and I guess I'm curious as to whether or not there's a retroactive component to this. No. No. Okay. And I guess in terms of applicability, um, I know you spoke to that earlier. Uh, did I also hear you say that it applies to private septage as well? Yeah. And how many of those? What's that? How many private septage visits Visits do we have? Yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it uh, currently. Uh, the last two months, zero. Okay. Um, so the, it's not like we can make a dent in things by eliminating private septage yeah. in our area. Uh, no. Um, you usually get an uptick in the pri uh, in septage receiving come uh, April, April, May, June. Usually the, and we, <clears throat> frankly, we do not get a lot of septage. Right. We're kind of out of the way. Gotcha. And we're a nickel more than South Portland, I think. So uh, unlike solid waste, there's no flow control. They must not bring it to you. Septage that's created in this town doesn't need to come to your facility for treatment. It can go anywhere. They can through. take it anywhere. We are mandated. We are, by our charter, we only can take septage from Scarborough. Okay. But presumably other jurisdictions don't have that limitation. That's correct. There presumably yep. would be a, an alternative if someone would get to more months and we're back in that. Yep, there are other outlets, yeah. And there are other outlets that charge less. Sanford took in 8 million gallons of septage last year. Mm -hmm. They're looking at it as a revenue generator. Yep. Yeah, there's also uh, uh, septage disposal sites where they can uh, they actually land apply septage. Oh wait, that doesn't make sense. That's <laughs> not logical. They can land apply septage, but not sludge. Huh. I have a question there. Sorry, didn't uh, mean to bring the snark to you. There. Is there any interstate issues as far as hauling sludge, like state to state? Um. <laughs> Yes and no. There, sludge can be hauled out, out, out of state. Okay. It's not an issue. Uh, but like New Hampshire does have some in place requirements that if you cannot dispose of something this way in your state, you can't dispose of it that way in their state, even uh, though it meets their regulations. Sure. So like if we compost here and generate compost that can't be land applied here, we can't ship it to New Hampshire and land apply it. The reason I ask is there's places like in, in Connecticut, uh, Cinegro, uh, mm -hmm. they, they actually incinerate waste. And we see that, I mean, it's a profitable entity for them. Yeah. So they, they just want to take as much waste as they can. Is, is that The problem is getting it down to them. That's oh, it basically a uh, tractor. A tractor hauling cost is about six six bucks a mile. Really? Yeah. It's not cheap. Wow. Tom, you had yeah, more did, questions. Just a couple others. Uh, is the moratorium in place under the authority of the superintendent, or is this an action item for this body? This, this is right something that, you know, normally under Robert's rules, we don't discuss something until a motion is brought to the floor. Mm -hmm. The motion hasn't been brought to the floor. I wanted a, an open discussion Good. first. So it's, it's, it's a matter for your decision. Yes, trust it is. Okay. Is, there a, is the moratorium in writing such that it's It will be in our it? minutes. It'll be as written as a motion in our minutes. Yes. If we wrote on it, yes. Well, just I, I would observe and I think the minutes should reflect. I think that should be provided for all of our benefits, including yours, uh, in advance of the meeting so we can appreciate and I think it's just good practice to make sure that you're compliant with, with the statutory requirements. Um, to my knowledge, that moratorium needs to clearly state the rationale for it, and there's some other statutory requirements. So please, for your own benefit, consult with the legal counsel to make sure that that is properly constructed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Go ahead. Just a question. Do you need the moratorium? If, if everything from now on, you know, if everything going forward, they still have to come to you, it's going to be on your agenda for next month. So you get the month without putting the moratorium, you get a month to see how things settle out. 
but you can certainly deny the next batch of projects that come up or table them until such you have a resolution to this. You could do that without putting moratorium on. Is that a mechanism that would work? Yeah, yeah it just, you know, it, it just seems like it, you would have the flow of business, particularly if you think it might get um, taken care of, then, you know, you can decide at your next meeting, okay, we don't see any end to this, but at least you've got three, four, whatever that project backlog is right before you that you can take action on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can, I, I guess, maybe for a little clarification as to how we came to discussing this topic mm -hmm. is really about we're faced with additional costs, whether it's, you know, unintended consequences of new legislation, right? We're faced with additional costs that we would need to pass on to the ratepayers at some point mm -hmm. in the very near future to be able to, I mean, if we're talking about a 10 to 15, I've heard multiple numbers tonight, yeah. 10 to 15% increase in our operating budget, then it's going to put us in a very difficult position. That's why we're here talking about that, right? Uh, not yes, quite. not quite. Can, can I answer oh, that? Go ahead. Um, the, the issue is that, you know, if I don't have an outlet for my for the sludge, um, I'm at risk of violating, whether it's, you know, a, a solid waste disposal violation or a, a effluent violation because I can't get rid of the solids in, in a fast enough fashion to, to a risk of violation. So with that, knowing of that risk by allowing additional uh, users into the system, you know, providing flow. Um, I don't professionally. I, I, I feel that's. Uh, I'm not doing my uh, my due diligence in, in protecting the environment and running the treatment plant, and you know, in accordance to its license. Uh, I do, you know, I know under the license, you know, um, like with with regards to septage, I I have the right to. Even on a, on a um, uh, an immediate basis, if the uh, somebody is coming and discharging septage into the treatment plant, and all of a sudden it has a detrimental impact, I can shut septage down immediately um, and, and um, put a stop to that to try to protect the the biologic process. Understood. Yeah, and I, I think we could make that clear in this discussion, and maybe. People are clear on that, but I certainly wasn't exactly clear on it. And I received a phone call today from somebody that's concerned about this moratorium and, you know, wondered if this was a political stunt in trying to make things move along faster. And I want to make sure that that's not, that it's clear that's not what this is. No, this, this, is, this you know, I, I have this is environmental concern, concerns for the environmental plant. concerns. This is, this is an environmental um, uh, situation and potential health crisis if uh, we're unable to um, if, uh, get rid of slip solids in a, in a reasonable fashion. <clears throat> so uh, with regards to cost, yes, it is going to impact our operation budget and it is something that is going to have to be passed on to the ratepayers, but that's essentially the cost of operation. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we do what we can to abate the cost, but it, um, it, it's a true operational cost increase as a result of changes as well. Would it, would, so, it make, sorry, yeah. would it make sense to consider tonight uh, working on a draft moratorium, which sure. would be retroactive to March 2nd? It doesn't even need no, to be retroactive. We're, we're good just with no business ahead of us. Yeah, yeah, nothing else would be coming until Dave makes the next agenda. I think that's probably the more prudent way to approach. That way, you get a chance to yeah, just check in with that. council and make sure we do it at, by the book. At, at, the, at this point, then, which is only three weeks away because of right. we were delayed delayed a month. Yeah, I wouldn't know if that would mean someone could, you know, submit applications tomorrow, Monday, knowing that a moratorium is is coming. So there we go. They can. They can. It just doesn't mean he has to. It won't get in front of the board until the next meeting. Right. 
Right. And we may have a better feeling on where the we where the state is going with regards to right. addressing the situation. So so it's not necessary that we approve this moratorium tonight. No. no. Okay. no. There are important nuances that you should consult with legal counsel yep. in terms of uh, uh, you know, pending applications, if you will, whether or not it's warranted. And, and again, the, your attorney can give you advice in that regard in terms of how best to, to frame and, and award the actual moratorium to make sure it applies as you wish. Um, I think this is an excellent suggestion. I think there are, but there's a potential for, for grave consequences, financial and otherwise. And so I ask you as a, bo as a body to consider that and, and, and but uh, certainly make sure that you're following procedures such that it's not a return that um, your action uh, can stand and uh, serve the purpose you intended to. So can I ask a clarifying thing just for sure. Priscilla? Looking at the, uh, looking at the document, it sounds like what we're able to provide them, what we have for product, they're able to accommodate currently. It's just a matter of the cost aspect. Um, not necessarily. Um, you know, and, and that's been proven, you know, even though I did sign the document, it was five days before I got transportation. Some of the problems that, uh, that are unfolding is the actual logistics of transporting the sludge up to uh, New Brunswick as you, you know, not only is it the trucks and tractors and drivers need to switch, um, the run now is twice as long as it needs to be. So in, in essence, the available infrastructure to convey the sludge has been cut in half. Uh, and so it, it's a logistics thing. The reason I ask the question is I was looking at the Nighthawk staging area as a way, I just was asking if basically if that's, if you can get there, but then from there it's different story. Yeah, we can get there easy enough, but the Nighthawk staging area that they, they established, they limited to 90 tons, and we produce 30 tons in four, every four days. So it's, it's really, you know, I, I literally thought when I read the letter that there was a typo, and it was 900 tons, and DEP confirmed that it was 90 tons. So you know. That doesn't seem like a lot. Uh, city of Portland is producing, I think, either 90 or 120 tons a day. 24,000 tons a year. They have three or four tra trailer dumps leave every day. So what do they do? What are the other communities in Maine wastewater facilities doing right now as far as the backlog of getting sludge out and the dumping? Well, in Nick's case, he's lucky that his wintertime flows are a lot lower and he has I put huge, out a can every he, two yeah, weeks. He uh, has huge storage yeah, ability. Storage. So I'm not uh, worried about it now. My but, gray hairs will start popping out again in August when the staging area goes away. Yeah. You know. but, um, so they're all in the same boat that we are and they're trying to figure it out. Uh, there's actually an emergency meeting that I'm going to be attending with all superintendents to tomorrow to um, Oh, talk about special. this. You know, just, just as a follow up, are you aware other districts are considering more trying? Yes. Definitely. I, I know of at least six to ten other districts that are considering it. You know, you have to understand, for those who don't understand wastewater, these plants are designed for flow through. They're not designed to store. You know, if we are forced to keep solids in our system, then they'll burp and they'll go out the pipe into the ocean. They're not supposed to, we don't want them to go there. You know, I'll, I'll get on my high horse and say, we're the original environmentalists. We've been doing this for over a hundred years. We don't want to close. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> but that's what we do. Our mission is to protect public health and the environment, and we're fulfilling that mission. And the other thing I want to point out is there are no villains in this. this culmination of, I don't know, pop-up crisis, whatever you want to call it, sludge storm. This culmination is, it was started years ago and it entailed many different decisions. And we have had ever decreasing outlets of our product. And in 1911 and 1639, 
sort of squeeze the aperture a little smaller. And we just need to find a long-term solution. And it's hard to work on a long-term <coughs> solution when we're back in our sludge that into our own plants. People, right? That's right. Well, the, 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 the wastewater industry is trying to advocate DEP because we need regional solutions. We do. Um, and, um, you know, we're trying to advocate that, you know, they, they kind of drive the bus here because, uh, but that hasn't, hasn't happened yet. Go ahead, so, Elliot. We'll let, we'll let Thank you. Why don't you up here? It's open to everybody. Not well, in public comments toward the end, but I'll let you speak. <laughs> um, Elliot Chamberlain, owner of Chamberlain Homes. Um, just for clarity for the, whether it's Dunsing Crossing or the Downs or Lake Farms or, or uh, Carey's project across the street, do you consider, especially like the situation I'm in, um, we're approved subdivisions being built, the last couple of phases are being built, and we've paid the capital reserve fees for all of those. Do you, are you saying that even if the moratorium went into effect under your uh, comments tonight, would I be covered or not covered? Yes. Yes, you would be. Your, your approval that you already have in hand um, would make you exempt, from, make the you exempt from the moratorium. You know, we're not ogres here. We don't want to take back what we've already given. Um, you know, you've been given approval, and you can run with it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Do you have a question, Joe? No more statements than anything else. Okay. okay, go for it. I think I get my questions out of the way, except for, I guess, one. Um, can I recommend that we draft a letter or make a request to Senator Brennan, where she is the author, um, to try to move along some legislation and uh, regional solutions. I wish we were not able to be here tonight. I mean, she was the spear that really kind of got this LD going. Um, LD 1911. Yes. So, um, I mean, nobody understands what the impact's going to be, but, uh, you know, in the process of writing those, but uh, she would probably be very influential in trying to address some of these concerns. Um, so I think, you know, something on behalf of the board from the superintendent to try to get uh, maybe her colleagues to find a legislative solution to open some things up a little bit. Yeah, I've been in communication with her on a regular basis um, this past week, her and Ann Carney, um, you know, via email, but, um, you know, I'll certainly draft an official letter. I, yeah, I think that'd be good to do an official letter. I'm sorry um, to interrupt you, but I, just to take that before you get on to your next point, take yeah. that a bit further, I think I would recommend that you, uh, and I'm sure it's probably on the docket for your emergency meeting, but that consortium of superintendents and some type of message that comes from that group would be worth its weight in gold to mm -hmm. state representatives as well. Sorry. No, no, I think that's great. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I, I, I understand uh, the position that we're in, um, and it's a sandwich that nobody wants to take a bite on. Um, it's, you know, from all angles. But that being said, I think before considering a, a moratorium, I'd really like to understand what it is that is in, um, that we have not seen for applications, and it's important for us to be um, good stewards and, uh, relations with the community, but at the same time, we have a risk. Um, there's no question that we have an environmental risk, and there's no question that DEP will certainly levy fines to us if we have too much on our hand, right? Uh, so, but I, I think I would like to uh, understand what uh, what is out there that we haven't seen, um, and work with the town to see what that looks like. Okay, uh, I definitely. Think, uh, I think we've approved the majority of projects, but i just kind of like to see what that looks like. Uh, personally, also, uh, you know, um, have that uh, document in writing so we know what the purpose looks like as well. I'd be more comfortable in that aspect. Um, and the other side of that coin is also understanding how many projects we've approved that haven't been built that aren't giving yes, us flow correct. yet. We, I, I think there's a probably an astronomical amount of that as well. That was going to be my next point because, I mean, obviously, we've approved a lot of projects that uh, necessarily haven't gone 
entirely shovels to the ground that we can see what that liability looks like. Um, I'm completely fine with shutting down, uh, uh, you know, taking in septage as long as we let our, our customers know that that's the situation. But I'd really like to really understand what we're up against other than the fact that, you know, hauling's an issue. Um, and I think that we really need to get our, um, the Senator on board to help find us a solution that's just kind of hanging us into it with all due respect. I don't have a motion. You, we don't need a motion for that. Okay. We just we directed you to write that letter. Perfect. Essentially, and to check in with the attorney for uh, language on a moratorium. We're pleased to, to work with uh, Dave and whoever else to get a best handle on what, what's kind of been approved and, and uh, not yet built, but also what's kind of in the pipeline that we haven't seen yet. That would be uh, helpful. We can provide that data to you for your consideration at your next meeting. Yeah. I agree. And pardon me, Tom, but I, I guess I'll ask, is there any consideration on behalf of the town to address this issue with state representative? Sure. A, le a letter, well, I, yeah. Yeah, I would be pleased to. Um, I think uh, we're blessed. I think our legislative delegation um, is held in high regard, and I think um, I think that will, to our, to our benefit, I think. It sounds as though the consequence that we find ourselves in uh, was unintended. Um, uh, maybe I'm naive, but um, you know I think there's a confluence of different things that were probably done for all the right reasons, but they come together and create this situation that was probably not foreseen. Um, and again, I, I do think a crisis helps to motivate things, and we're not alone in this. I suspect uh, many of the legislators will be hearing from their constituents that they need to find a solution and find it fast. I, frankly, I think that what is needed is uh, people need to call our legislatures and, and uh, this will get resolved. We'll, we'll figure it out. It's just, it's going to have to take time. I'm going to ask, Mr. Paul, uh, mm -hmm. when uh, is your, can you speak to your moratorium from the town standpoint? It has to do with uh, cannabis uh, establishments. Okay, so not all buildings, just certain. No, it's just uh, it very, very surgical in its impact. And, and uh, those, are, those are the details that I think are very important for you to understand and lock down in our written documents. So you have full awareness, and the public has full awareness and understanding as well of, of what you're considering. Yeah, we, we would be very uh, appreciative if on the town's behalf we could also advocate for the situation. I'll do my part. Thank I don't you. know what that solution is, but I'll I don't think any of us knows really. <laughs> well, I've offered to make many drives up to Augusta and have help with some of the conversations because but they haven't taken me up on it yet. I'm surprised a regional facility makes sense. I'm surprised someone hasn't jumped on the bandwagon to make money. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you think about the, 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 the economic um, cost of someone doing this. Wow. It's crazy. It's continuous a, flow. Right? It's a big risk. Yeah. Um, it's a big risk. Big reward, um, big risk. Someone from Casala said, we'd like to be on the leading edge, not on the bleeding edge. <laughs> and I can understand more and more. Now, now Bob Met Met Metcalf that was here tonight representing the Morrison Development Center was um, the architect for the main car testing program that was out there oh, originally God. and so they built i don't know how many of those across the state and then still pulled, out there, and then still pulled, out there. Still oh yeah out there. buildings are yeah, yeah. yeah. buildings are. Uh, and then pulled the plug out and that company went belly up yeah. so good example what were you about to say mike now rmi customers are not affected by this if we're at RMI's in New Hampshire, right? Right. They're being they're hauling to New Hampshire. No, they are not affected because they're disposing of their sludge. Right. A lot of the RMI customers are already hauling their sludge. They're hauling sludge up to um, Quebec. They're going to um, Angelo. 
Valley of the Springs, Asbestos, Canada, the, the oldest town of Asbestos, Canada, where they had the asbestos mines, and they're using it as backfill material for filling well, the mines. they changed that name. It's, valley, <laughs> it's a Valley of the Springs. That's their new name. <laughs> a rebranding would help, right? <laughs> so, Dave, you're... Uh, Sorry. Elliot had a Come question. Go ahead. From, what's the reality of New Brunswick shot in Maine off? I think well, it's very... Very, there's a strong potential of that. You know, I was on one of those calls, and forgive me for droning on about this, but this letter set off a storm. I have a string of emails, 130 pages long, 100 different emails coming through. And frankly, uh, it's, <laughs> it's challenging, and it's a real pain in the neck. But we have to get rid of our waste, and one of our only outlets is Casella. And Casella was basically shut down in putting our compost or our sludge to beneficial reuse. They used to compost it and then sell it as a fertilizer. They're not allowed to do that any longer. They can still do that with outside, out of state sludge, but they can't do it with ours. They were told to put it in a landfill, and the testimony in front of our senator said this landfill will be able to take it, won't be affected by it at all. And it was faulty information. And, you know, that's where we're at right now. And every plant produces sludge. So Portland produces 24,000 tons a year. And together, the rest of us make up the rest, and it's over 100,000 tons a year. That's a lot of sludge. We don't have enough construction and demolition debris in Maine to bulk up that amount of sludge and put in a landfill. That's what's starting this whole thing. We need to find another way. And a crisis is a good kick-starting way to find an alternative. That alternative won't be cheap. It won't be easy. And it won't be quick. Is it a case where the pulp material was found? The, it, the landfill can be reopened? Oh, the landfill is still open. Like and it's still taking sludge. They've only cut the number, the amount of sludge going in the landfill by, by 40%. They're still putting 60% of their clients' sludge in that landfill. Yep. The other legislation was uh, prohibiting out of state bulky waste for construction demolition crew. So if you got a couple of dorm couches, Elliot, you can bring them up. They'll yeah, take, happily really. take them. <laughs> but let me be clear, that's only a stopgap measure. Yeah. That, that landfill has a finite life. The number 10 years has been bandied about, but I don't believe it. I think it's sooner than that. Yeah. So Landfilling sludge isn't the environmental thing to do, and it's not the best way to go. It just isn't. Long term, it isn't. It's definitely a vicious cycle, this PFAS dilemma we've, we've had, but as the superintendent uh, illustrated in one of our conversations with the senator, was you know, we're not putting PFAS in this sludge. It's coming out of humans, and that's how we're getting it. Um, so it, it's definitely a vicious cycle, there's no question, but it still doesn't address the breweries and all these other different places that are producing. Again, I don't think the breweries are producing PFAS. They're just no. bottling it. That's no. all. You know, and there are no villains in this whole saga. Even the chemical companies that made the PFAS. Where, where is the PFAS? You know, we're, we're, we're wearing it. We're eating it. That's where it's all coming from. But we're allowed to hold it. Mm -hmm. It's made life convenient. So Dave, you're going to draft a moratorium and run it, run it by yep. legal for yep. us to consider in three weeks. Yep, and I'll draft the letter to Stacy Brennan, uh, Brennan, Brennan. Um, and um, would we want that to go out before the meeting? So I'll run the it letter or the moratorium. The letter. 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 Yeah. I'll get that letter drafted up and. Yeah. And you know, I'll, I'll run it by the board via email. And 
And we don't need a motion for any of that. No, we can direct him to do okay. these things without a motion. Great. And without emotion. Um, with that, uh, any more questions about our discussion? All right, we'll move on to the budget summary. Yeah, uh, it's easy. One month budget summary is included in the packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Jason. See you, Elliot. Thank you. Any discussion on the budget? Mari, none. All in favor? All right, this is one of my favorite parts. Public comments. Anyone from the public want to comment further? Bridget, Bridget, what would you like to say? <laughs> Got any good good jokes? <laughs> All right, so on the public comments, trustee comments, uh, we'll start with Joe. I'd like to thank the town manager for coming tonight. And I appreciate uh, the age of four uh, on this stressful situation, by no means, and uh, it's guidance through it. Thank the staff for their work. And be safe with this next new storm. Good. Mike. Um, again, thanks to the uh, superintendent for keeping us informed and, and staying uh, on top of this. Um, and also to the staff for another month well done. Tony? Okay. I agree. I think Dave did a great job. I think he's made the facts known to everybody, and uh, it's a very stressful situation. I can't even tell you. Say, um, so good as they made it. It's ben? Yeah, thank you to uh, Sabrina for handling the audit. It sounds like she's doing a good job so far with that. Fantastic. Uh, and the rest of the staff for, for a good month and, and Dave your handling of this issue we appreciate your expertise and uh, we also appreciate the input from the town thanks for coming you had your chance <laughs> Jason uh, echo all those comments thanks to, again to the staff and, and Dave for bringing this forward and Nick for the work that you've done I know you've been on both sides of this so thank you for all your efforts and certainly thanks to the town manager and economic development uh, group for being here tonight uh, is appreciated. It's nice to know that everybody's in this situation. It's not just us and that we have some input and uh, certainly from the public comments tonight as well. So hopefully we can get through the resolution on this sooner than later. Um, I'd hate to see, at least a, a, from my perspective, I'd hate to see, you know, a, a hit to the town's economic development in any shape or form or hardships by uh, folks in the, an economy where we don't know where it's going right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, uh, thanks to everybody for their input and we will all work hard to make sure that we get some type of resolution here in short order. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said a lot already, but I want to thank Tom. And, uh, all my condolences to Jake's family. Uh, you know, this issue is not an easy one to fix. We need a long-term fix. We need a more creative solution than what we've been doing for the past 20 years. Um, I'll just leave it. I'll entertain the last, the last motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Joe. Second. 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 Thank you, Jason. All in favor. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put any of these chairs back. <laughs>